My name is Sigrid Koch. I'm a principal solution engineer, and I want to talk to you today about Evolve APIs, and we'll use an SAP business partner as an example throughout. So here's our agenda. We'll do a quick overview of the APIs. We'll go through some usage examples. And for those of you that are not geeky, that, that's your part. Then you can drop off. And the geeks among us can go through the build examples. I'll open up and show you how they were put together. And we'll do a quick wrap up. So overview first. So Evolve is our process automation platform. And it's always been able to interact to the SAP system. With this release, we've also built integration directly into Enterworks, which is our multi-domain master data management system. We've had OLAYDB connectivity, SOAP, SQL, and ODBC. And with this latest release, we've added OData and REST. So what does that mean? Let's take a look. So there's three different kinds of APIs, and I'll be diving into each of them. Very briefly, the SAP Data API is going to allow you to leverage those, those studio scripts that you've created and be able to call them as an API. The Digital Access API will allow you to interact with Evolve business processes. You can kick one off, get tasks, complete a task. Great stuff there. And then we also support REST APIs from third-party applications from an Evolve process. So let's dive in to some usage examples, and we'll start off with a third-party API support. So the third-party API support is going to allow you to exchange data with other systems of record. The world is your oyster now. You're not, no longer limited to SAP or SOAP API calls. You can interact with lots and lots of different systems of record. And you can still interact with SAP the regular way through our SAP automations, or what we call scripts, or you can interact with SAP through the API way. We'll go through an example. This will be a business partner creation. It does all the good things that the Evolve process automation platform allows. It's agile, it's flexible, allows you to do parallel tasks, role-based views, the data stewardship capabilities, all of those good things. And it allows you to leverage SAP OData APIs. And in this particular solution, I've used quite a number of them. I've also leveraged Precisely Spectrum's address validation. Super easy to integrate. The process would be somebody fills out the request. It might be a sales rep or a customer service rep. Master data team reviews, checks for duplicates, posts. Then depending on the business partner type, we have in parallel AR and sales data collection, there's approvals, master data posts, or for supplier, it's AP and purchasing, input data in parallel, approvals, post, and then that's the end. So let's take a look at the demo. So I'm here on the main Evolve site where I can see my tasks, my favorite templates or solutions, and statistics about the work that I've done and any notifications. We expand this depending on your role. You'll see tasks and templates, processes that are in progress. Only people with the role of a solution developer will see solutions and app administrators and apps are a logical grouping of solutions and we have many of them would include connections, operations and configuration. There's also reports and calendars. So let me go ahead and launch for my favorite, the business partner create. We'll go ahead and choose partner type and then We'll enter the organizational name, search term, and we could look up the language. And then I can type in my address. And the type ahead will fill in the, fa the values and then update the map. We also have precisely spectrum address validation here. So I can go ahead and validate that address. And with 95% confidence and the fact that it's verified all the bits of the address, well, we can confidently accept this and update the address fields. Then we can choose the transportation zone, the time zone's been filtered, and we can enter in some email addresses. Go ahead and enter in one more.
The other thing of note, and you'll see this later, is that this process can actually be started from another system through our digital access API. So most of these fields could be filled in, and passed in, and this initial step can be automated. We can add a bank if we want to, or several banks. We'll go ahead and skip that for today and say, please approve ASAP. And we'll go ahead and submit. If we're not done, we can save. Now I'll hop over to my tasks. And you'll see that I've got a couple of them going. One's been processing prior. So this is a step where the master data team will potentially approve and post. So everything in this view is for that master data team. And it's read only. Some of our customers allow master data to make edits. And that's your choice. You can include the data that you want on each view and make it editable or not. One of the things we want to do is search for duplicates. And this is an API call now against SAP. And you'll see we have one that looks similar, but it's not. So we'll say no duplicate found. We'll go ahead and post that business partner. And you'll see these are the types of messages you'll get from the API calls. We have a new business partner number. We'll now post the address, which also includes the email and phone numbers. And that's also been posted. And if we included banks, we would do an additional post. So we'll go ahead and approve that. And now in parallel, we'll collect data from sales and finance. And again, you can include other roles and include that in a parallel or sequential path as your process needs. Well, let's hop into finance. And you'll see here that it's collapsed the address, although you can still visualize it. And this role also would allow you to see the banks. Again, a design decision. We have no banks to show. Also of note, we've posted the actual role. You have to create the role before loading data. And that, was happened, that happened automatically when we loaded the form for this particular role. And so now we'll go ahead and choose a couple of companies. We've set a lot of defaults here for the various roles, and those can be changed. So perhaps we want to change payment terms. And I'll make that one net 15. We could add house bank and so on. We'll go ahead and complete. And now we'll go on to sales entries. And this would be done by somebody in the sales team. And I'll add a couple of sales orgs. And these lookup lists came from SAP, so I'm just staging the data in a database for selection. We'll add a sales district. And we'll add a US sales district as well. There are optional fields that you can fill in for office and group. Again, you choose what's required or not. So all the required fields have been filled in. And I've only got one set of tax classes. Otherwise, you could have multiple here. And we've defaulted almost everything else. And most companies use defaults and, in fact, don't even show them. They default them under the covers because they're always that value. Based on the sales org, we've defaulted plant. And we've leveraged part of the address in Ecoterms. So we're done. If, again, if any of the fields were invalid or missing, we would not be able to complete. I'm going to go ahead and complete now. So now in parallel, we have approvals for both. And as I've been going through this process, we have emails that have been coming through. So the general role approval and post, the finance and sales entries. And we already have one here for finance approval. And you can open the task and approve it. You can also include an attachment, a copy of the form itself. There's some general solution data that we've pulled to include in the body. And you can enable email approvals. So I can look at the copy of the form and say approved, or just simply click send, and I'm done. So I'm back here in Evolve, and I'll go ahead and manually approve the sales. And that's going to open up a specific sales approval where everything is read only. I can review it, scroll through all the entries, and say OK. And we'll go ahead and approve. Now, while this has been going on, we're collecting all the information. So 
here's the, the instance of that workflow. And I've included a lot of the data that we've already captured. And I can come in here and look at process history and expand it. And this is bottom up, so this was when it was submitted. And again, normally these are different people. For demonstration purposes, it's all me. But that can be derived based on what's in the form. And in the case of the roles where there might be multiple, you can even split out the approval for different company codes, for example. So I've uh, completed this particular task to post. It's been approved. I finished the sales entry, and I approved it. I did the finance entry and approved it, and it shows that it was done via email. And the only thing left is this particular task. If I come here, I can also look at version history. So at every step, it creates a version. If I click on one, it will give me what we call the status view. And this is an optional view. It includes everything read-only. It also includes a picture of the actual solution. So this is the solution. We're at this particular step, so we started it. We went and did the general role. We're now in the customer loop. And we've done finance and sales, and we're now waiting for the master data team to approve and post. If we go back to the main workflow. That means that the only thing left is a notification to be sent. So very helpful to be able to check statuses of processes in flight. So I'll go ahead now and open the master data task to approve and post the roles. And you'll see here, again, that each of the roles have been created for sales and finance. I just simply need to post companies. And again, those are the messages we get back from our API call. And we'll post the sales areas. And we'll go ahead and approve. And we're, we've completed the process. So again, that's just a quick example of something that you can do in Evolve. And in this case, it's purely using API calls. So let's take a look at that business partner in SAP. And here um, is the general address data. It includes phone number as well as email addresses. And if we go to the company role, we can check out the companies we've created, I'll pick one, and you'll see the fields that we've entered. I can also take a look at the sales data. These are the sales areas we filled in. We'll go ahead and select one, and you'll see all of the fields filled in for orders, for shipping, and billing. And of course, you could include other roles and other data based on your needs. You get all of the benefits that Evolve will will give you that process automation platform, accelerate your process, you're improving data quality as you go along, often you're shortening the process. It's a very flexible and agile product. You can easily change the process or add on to it. You're adhering to best practices and compliance, and you get that greater process visibility. And with this release, it's easier integration. You can leverage the address validation of your choice. Super, super easy. There's no interaction with, with the SAP GUI required at all. Everything was done through SAP OData APIs. Again, it requires Evolve 20.2 or higher, and we're leveraging the SAP Gateway services for OData calls. There's the third party. Um, of course, this would also work with salesforce.com. I could get and update accounts. I could easily update. Once I've created a, a business partner, I can update Salesforce with the business partner number, et cetera. So there's tons and tons of use cases here. Now I'd like to cover the Digital Access API, which again is going to allow you to interact and kickstart these evolved processes. Countless times over the years I've been here where we've been asked to kick off a workflow from inside SAP or from Salesforce or from PLM, success factors, you name it. And it will allow you to interact with Evolve to start and interact with those processes. Again, starting or interacting with the Evolve processes. Lots and lots of examples of where that might be the case. Salesforce, perfect example. You've got an account. It's not a customer. The opportunity reaches a certain threshold. You want to kick off a customer creation process. And you want to pass in some of the Salesforce data to start it with. This will allow you to do it. And it, 
basically provides you faster integration. So I'm here in Power Automate Desktop, but just it's purely as an example. And I'm going to run an automation that is leveraging that digital access API. And we'll go ahead and click Run. Now this would be a bot, and we're passing in a number of parameters, the SAP system, where the actual um, solution exists, some of the data. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And the API here is going to launch the create customer business partner process. And so here's the process ID. And now if I come back here to evolve and I update my tasks, I have an additional step in here if it's auto started through that API to review and you can continue the process. The other thing you can do is if you don't have any human interaction, you can have the Evolve process automation platform simply post it automatically in the background and only notify someone if there's an error. So that's the Digital Access API, and there's a ton of use cases for it. So now I would like to go through the SAP Data API. And what makes this really exciting is your investment in those SAP automations, what we call studio scripts, can be leveraged as API calls from lots of different applications. So this is where a third-party application wants to interact with SAP, and they can leverage those scripts, those SAP automations. And I can tell you, I spent a ton of time trying to build out example um, integrations with Automation Anywhere and Blue Prism, for example. Now it's super easy. If they can do a REST API call, they can very, very easily integrate with our SAP Data API to post or extract data to and from SAP. Third-party products can call it, and it's much, much faster integration. You're leveraging your existing investment, and it requires either Studio Manager or Evolve. So here I am, if for any of you script builders, those SAP automation builders, I've already recorded, and I simply choose the mapping, and it's going to create what's called a JSON payload. I'm not getting too geeky yet, and we'll be able to submit that, and once it's submitted, we'll be able to run it. So let's go back quickly to Power Automate. And I have an example here to update a business partner. So I recorded it, I submitted it to Studio Manager or Evolve, in this case it's Evolve, and I'll go ahead and click Run. I parameterized it, so this is my SAP system, this is where the actual automation lives, and here is the data for a business partner update. So I'll go ahead and click OK calling that REST API, the SAP Data API, and in a minute it'll come back and give us a result. So here we go, it was successful, and this should be familiar to anybody that's recorded a business partner automation, the business partner has been changed. Super exciting. So now that I've covered the three examples and some example use cases for them, it's time to get a little bit geeky, and we'll talk about how they're built, and I'll open up some examples. So for those that don't want to know how the sausage is made, <laughs> you can drop off now. So before I get into them, I want to talk about authentication touch points. So these third-party applications can use three different kinds of authentication methods to speak to either the SAP Data API or the Digital Access API client secret, secure token, or certificate. Now from within Evolve, with an Evolve solution, you can call the third party APIs or the REST APIs. So for Enterworks, we have Truster Basic. For S4 HANA, we have SAP HANA Basic. Salesforce, we're leveraging their authentication method. And everybody else, it, it would either be None, Basic, or HTTP Header, which will allow you any number of key value pairs to enable you to authenticate. Studio will still authenticate the way it does to Evolve, and when you're running, the runner will also authenticate to the SAP system through all the mechanisms we've had previously. And it's just a pictorial view from uh, the different types of applications that might be calling in, again, for the Digital Access API or SAP Data API. It's, we've got a gatekeeper here to make sure that everything is secure. So client secret, secure token, or certificates, and that has to pass the test, or they can't get to anything on the Evolve site. So with REST APIs, where do you find those OData APIs? So I've got a, a link here, 
And this is where you would find the API. So for business partner, there it is. And if we go to the API reference, there are tons and tons and tons of calls. So I use quite a number of them in my particular solution. So there's a number of steps that you need to do to, to leverage them. You'll need to, for one time, create a data connection, and I'll do a quick review. You'll save your credentials or use system credentials in the data connection. Then in, in Composer, you'll add the data connection, you'll build out the URL with our really cool URL builder, and you can use field names in here so that it's dynamic. You'll then add your JSON payloads, which you can copy from that site that I just showed you, and then you can create form fields. So just briefly, here is where um, an administrator can go to settings and authentication and third-party clients and register a client and choose the security type. So I've already created a few. If we go to connections and data sources, this is where I've added a connection for my S4 HANA system. And I'm not using system credentials, so we'll choose the authentication type. Again, we have several. And it will be active in Composer. So here's that business partner create that I just showed prior. And if we look, I have a number of data connections. So let me go ahead and edit one. This one is for search. So I choose that it's a REST API. Choose that data connection I just showed you. Then I can get into the URL builder, and this one has a ton of parameters, and I'm using fields here. So there's the order by, the max rows. Here's the filter with the business partner name, the search term, the category, and the business partner number. You can expand it to get address, which I had in there. You can use this, this to give you a count of how many were returned. The other portion here would be the JSON payload. So this is where you would add it, so let me hop over here. So this string, for the most part, I copied. And note, we, we support string, integer, decimal, Boolean, and date. So SAP has a number of interesting data types. Uh, I've seen string, a string, str, s, st, sti, look, you can see right here, string, 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 um, this GUID, this, GUID would be a string, this would be a date, this would be a string. So there might be a little bit of changing. Um, again, the Booleans we, we handle and decimal and integer we handle just fine. So keep that in mind when you're pulling this in. Once you've done that, and again, this one just simply has output, you can right click and create form fields. And that will then, if we go to the form and form data, it will create the output messages that will come from the API call. Here's that count. And then here are all of the SAP fields that I said to return, including the address. And here I have it for general. And with uh, general, I also included uh, error data. So you might want to have error messages that come out. Uh, so qu quite easy to do. And I've added data connections to post the general data address, bank is optional, adding the roles for sales and company. I've got a number of data connections for lookups. There's my sales, and I've got that spectrum address validation too. So just a quick peek at how this is put together. Now with the digital access API, when you add the license by default, all the solutions will be enabled. But you can also enable or disable them individually you, there's also a category field, which is purely for reporting. So you could say, hey, this is for business partner or customer, or you could say, hey, this is for US versus EMEA, or this is for business unit one versus business unit two. So you can use that field however you want, and it will allow you to help group together those API calls that we're logging. We'll also take a look at how to download the payload. I already showed you that authentication methods and I'll show you a quick test in Postman so you can actually see it in, in happening. Let's take a look. So here I am in Evolve and I've got my business partner solution that I had demonstrated earlier. If you pick it, you can download the payload in either XML or JSON. So if I open that up, you'll see 
basically everything. And it's pulled in the, the, the name. This is my form name, where it was stored, and my app name. And then you've got tons and tons of, of data available here. So here in Postman, I've skinnied that down. So in, as part of the headers, I've got my client ID and secret, which are variables. In the body, I've got the JSON. So there's those fields I just mentioned. I'm going to run it as my user ID. I've got optional comment. And then here's my, my customer data along with uh, address, email address and phone number. So I can simply click send. And the process has started. Super easy to do. Now with get all assignments, I've, I've used a filter here, so you can use some, some filters with ands and ors. So here's the call for my get all assignments, and I'm filtering it for me. Again, it's just pointing to an app in connection with my username, and it will give me a list of all of my tasks. So if I grab one of these, let me grab this ID. If I now want to complete a task, there's also a complete task. One of the fields is, a, is the actual task name. You can also point to the solution name um, and the actual task itself as a way to identify which task you're trying to complete. And here I'm just updating some of the address information. So I'll go ahead and click send. And this is going to then complete my task and we got a true back that it was successful. So again, three quick examples, launch the workflow, get all assignments, complete a task. Now the SAP Data API, which is my favorite. Uh, we'll, we'll map a script to JSON, submit it to Studio, find and download the payload, and show an example in Postman. So here is that script. It's mapped to JSON. It gives you the example here. You can test it. You'll submit it to Evolve. And here it is, and it's in production status, so you might have an approval step. And I can basically download the payload. So here's the payload and the solution name, library name, app name. I can put in all the values. It has the output too, so you really don't need that. It's just simply this bit. And because it's a transaction script, I can make validate true or false. So here in Postman, I have a business partner update. So I'm passing in the solution, the library, my app, the fields, the connection information to SAP. I want to go ahead and post. So I'll click send. And it's chained my business partner, and it's been successful. And th these are the, the code you get back from. Super easy to do. So as a quick wrap up, I just want to tell you, this is where you can find the 20.2 documentation. There's a specific area for APIs. Please engage with our professional services for training and solution assistance. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to speaking with you.